Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the only scandal in college sports that we need to talk about today. Uh, betting has sort of ravaged college sports in general in the last week. If you have not heard, Alabama baseball has an ongoing investigation. They have fired their head coach, Brad Bohannon, for his involvement in sizable wagers. He scratched a starting pitcher, brought in a reliever last minute. They got swept by their rival LSU, and somebody was making money off it, and Brad Bohannon knew that. That's an ongoing investigation, but that moved very quickly in less than seven days from when the games occurred to Brad Bohannon's no longer the coach. Well, Yesterday, it breaks that 111 total individuals, including athletes from Iowa and Iowa State, baseball, football, basketball, track and field, a bunch of sports at these two schools are involved in another investigation for their uh, betting on on their sports. This yeah. is insane. It's probably not going to be the last we hear of an incident like this. And the truth is, this is very unregulated right now. All of this is handled on a state-by-state -state basis where gaming commissions have to look into this, investigate, report findings, and then the universities have to deal with whatever the results are. Rob, what do you make of all of this? Um, first and foremost, I think the fact that it is now regulated and it is something that is monitored by organizations outside of just Vegas and outside of just your neighborhood bookie uh, is the reason why things like this get picked up. Um, we'll get into the, the Alabama coach in a second, because that's actually like one of the funniest and dumbest things I've ever, ever heard in my entire life. Uh, as far as the Iowa players are concerned, um, Brett McMurphy today of the Action Network uh, had a report that said, that there was zero evidence of sp suspicious wagering activity or match fixing involving any Iowa or Iowa State sporting event, which to me says that some of these kids bet on something, right? An Iowa track and field athlete bet on an NFL Shocking. game. A Shocking. basketball player on. bet on a baseball, right. like a a, a a pro baseball game, which like I don't care that much about. You don't have to worry about these kids getting the debt when you when you have to load something on, on Bet Rivers. You're not doing it on credit. Uh, Bet Rivers is not coming to break your legs if you can't pay because you have to get the money there up front. You're not betting on credit there. So um, I think at some point, and Jeff, I, I want your response to this in a second. Uh, at some point, we have to come to the, uh, the the acceptance that as long as you're not betting on your school or your sport, you probably got to let these kids like if a, if a high, college basketball player wants to bet on an NFL game, like are we really going to sit here and and focus on that. Do we really want to turn those situations into scandals? It's just going to be a Pandora's box. It's going to be a nightmare to deal with. Um, as far as the Alabama coaches, like I think that the way that this is currently set up with uh, with with legal gambling is why things like this ended up getting caught. So this is what happened: the Al Alabama baseball coach called a dude in Ohio and told him, "Look, this this uh, we're not going to have the starting pitcher." I need you to go bet like thousands and thousands of dollars on us to lose more or less. Right. So they go there, they put in this bet. Uh, they're betting five figures on a sport where there's almost no betting on it. Like there's who is, have you ever even heard of college baseball lines? Like hey, the speak, thing, that's, for your, that's, well, speak for yourself, Rob. That's, yes. that's barely a thing. I, I anyway, no, hey, hold, on, hold, on, Goodman, hold on, hold that's on. Why here's I the have. point. Here's, here's the point. So, um, you're betting on college baseball where there's like almost no action on any game and you're betting a ton of money on it. That is immediately going to get flagged. They're immediately going to investigate that. And when they did, they found that the coach was literally on the phone with the dude that was placing the bets at the time that he was placing the bets. Right. So that this is like a whole, this is an example of like the dumbest way to do it, but the easiest place to fix games are going to be like the low major level. Right. But the sure. problem is, it's going to be very, very, very difficult to legally get down enough money money to make it be worth the risk that you're taking because it's going to get flagged. If you bet $10,000 on a game where there's usually $500 in action, they are going to investigate that. I promise you it is going to get looked into. And if it seems at all suspicious, you're probably going to end up getting caught because all of this stuff is regulated now. Um, and when it gets to the higher levels, like the games where you actually have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, potentially six figures in the books that are taking these bets, you have to get to such a high level for a high major basketball player or a high major football player to take the risk of fixing a game, right? It's just, you're, you're talking about a ton of money and I don't know if that's worth it for them. 
I don't even know if you could offer a kid hundred thousand dollars to fix a game. I don't even know if that's going to be worth it for these guys that we're talking about getting like four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars in NIL, right? So I, I know that this is stuff that's headlines and it's going to continue to be headlines as we kind of navigate this new world. I just don't think that this is necessarily something where you're like, all right, blow it all up, get rid of illegal, get rid of legal sports betting. At, at the end of the day, like the reason when it's regulated, you're going to catch this stuff. So I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing. And frankly, I think we need to kind of uh, tweak the way that the NCAA will look at what is allowed for gambling and what is not allowed for gambling for college athletes. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy, but by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is, AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one, and man, that could not be more true it's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of february and the month of march when you are in my business and ag1 was exactly the supplement that i needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional bases for the day i've continued that into april i've continued that into may and i'm going to continue that the rest of the summer all i have to do is mix a scoop of ag1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and i'm ready to go do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine then athletic greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase go to athleticgreens.com backslash field 68 that's field 68 f-i-e-l-d the number six the number eight and you can get yours now so check it out and help support this show thanks yeah just so yeah, easy that's that's the thing it's just so easy for these kids now that's that's the the it just wasn't as easy years ago to you had to go to a bookie and there were steps now it's just it's so easy to place a bet and the culture has changed to where it's most honestly most college kids are gambling they are gambling because their buddies are gambling uh, it just again it wasn't like that uh when i was in college so it's it's made it easy for these athletes to be able to do it. And again, even if they're not doing it on their own sport, well, they have access to inside info on, you know, you don't think the Iowa basket, you don't think the McCaffreys have information. I'm not pointing out the McCaffreys, but I'm just saying they have information about, they might be boys with, with somebody in the baseball team. Well, you know, last I checked, Connor played on the baseball team. So my guess is he's got some information and, and and I'm again I'm using him as an example here, but I'm saying they are friendly with other people in other sports, so they do have inside info. So they're gonna be gambling maybe on those other sports. I don't know. It, it's it's a slippery. That's slope, why I'm. Guys. That's it why is. I'm saying if you're gonna don't ban it on betting on your sport if you're a college athlete and ban betting on your school. So yeah, you use the Connor anything McCaffrey involving that, that, your school, anything yeah, you, involving your school. Yes. If you are an Iowa basketball player, you cannot bet That's on fair. college basketball and you cannot bet on Iowa football, Iowa baseball, Iowa basketball, Iowa right. women's basketball, Caitlin Clark team total yeah. overs. What about water polo? Team. What about water polo? Bro? If you can find a line for Iowa water polo, then I think anybody should be allowed to <laughs> bet on that. And in fact, I would encourage going to the bet rivers app and betting as much as you can on water polo. You can those, bet on table there's tennis. no way. Hey, there's, there's no way they got tennis. sharp lines on Iowa water polo. There's no way there are sharp lines okay. on Iowa water polo. There's just a lot of gray area here is the truth. And I, I think this is going to be a very long ongoing thing because we're going to hear more and more situations like this pop up. And it's all going to be different. Every single one on a case-by-case -case basis is going to have different characteristics to it, different numbers to it, different situations. But yeah. um, I don't think – like I don't think a, a realistic solution is what you just laid out. That would be ideal from a better's perspective, right? Because betting's still going to happen. But to your point, Jeff, everybody knows everybody. Athletes know – other athletes even at other schools that would give right. them access to information that the public just doesn't have so uh we'll see it'll be fascinating to watch play out i do find it absolutely hey if you're not allowed to gamble when you get access to information that the public doesn't have then you need to bet rivers needs to come here and revoke my license okay like get get it out of my hands <laughs>
<laughs> I find it absolutely you don't have any hilarious. Info. You have no I real have, info. I have we some. know your sources. I have some. He, know, I have some. he knows people who have info. I, I find it hilarious that it's Iowa for this. You're really telling me Brian Ferentz isn't involved in some unders? <laughs> really? You're telling me that? Come on. I point you. No chance, folks. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field 68 content.